You've probably frozen enemies in the game before and notice some strange and erratic behavior, like how sometimes frozen decays into hydro and other times into cryo seemingly randomly. Or like how swirling a frozen enemy sometimes swirls both cryo and hydro and sometimes just cryo. All of this can actually be explained perfectly by the elemental gauge theory and the way it works is quite unique among all the other reactions in the game. If you haven't watched my video regarding the elemental gauge theory, I would suggest doing that first since I will be using the terminology I explained explained in that video. Frozen is actually the hidden 8th element in Genshin Impact. Well, I say that in a technical sense. Canonically, there are only 7 elements, but the game processes Frozen as its own separate element. It's important to understand that Frozen is not the same element as Cryo, but its own separate element with its own separate gauge, with its own set of elemental reactions which can coexist alongside Cryo and Hydro. Confusingly though, its elemental symbol is the Cryo symbol, but with a glowing halo around it. These symbols are on frozen enemies, you can see the difference between a cryo symbol and a frozen symbol here. If you got a keen eye though, you might remember seeing the frozen symbol in other places. In fact, the frozen symbol is everywhere in Teyvat. The cryo slimes you love testing pyro attacks on is not actually cryo slime, but technically a frozen slime. This is why you can't freeze cryo slimes with hydro attack, because frozen is triggered by hydro and cryo, not hydro and frozen. Similarly, a cryo abyss mage is actually a frozen abyss mage. The cryo hypo Hypostasis is actually the frozen hypostasis. Actually, all the cryo shields in the game seem to really be frozen shields. This is why you can freeze enemies in a hydro shield, but not the other way around. Although, very counterintuitively, you can apply hydro to these enemies, then use the cryo to trigger frozen. The frozen text is displayed, but some enemies actually have an innate immunity to frozen, like the slimes and the abyss mages. However, whopper flowers with shields can actually be frozen in this way. As a side note, you cannot trigger shadow on these enemies that innately have a frozen aura. So now's a good time to explain that thumbnail which might have looked like a typo at first. The abyss mage on the left after receiving a cryo attack has undergone the frozen reaction but in fact it is still a hydro abyss mage. The abyss mage on the right on the other hand as we have learned is truly the frozen abyss mage. Frozen has its own gauge just like all the other elements but instead of applying it directly by a character's attack it's only generated when the frozen reaction takes place. Regardless of the Hydro and the Cryo's order of application, the Frozen Gauge will be generated whose size will be 2 times the minimum of the Hydro and Cryo Gauge. At the same time, half that size will be subtracted from the Primary Gauge, so effectively a multiplier of 1. If the Primary Gauge is not depleted after the reaction, then it'll stay as a Hidden Gauge, and its elemental symbol won't be visible, but it'll still decay normally. Once the Frozen Gauge decays completely, if the Hidden Gauge is still present, then the Gauge will become visible again. The Frozen Gauge has a unique rate of decay among all the other their elements. For how long the frozen gauge will last is mostly linearly dependent on the initial gauge size, but for larger gauges it will have diminishing returns. Nothing else in the game can affect how long frozen lasts for, so even elemental mastery won't help you here. Although frozen itself is the result of an elemental reaction, it doesn't prevent more reactions from triggering on top of it. However, all of the existing reactions act uniquely and differently when frozen gets in the mix. For instance, melt and superconduct can be triggered on both the frozen gauge and the hidden crack gauge if present. Shattered can be triggered on the frozen gauge, swirl can be triggered on the frozen gauge, hidden cryo gauge, and hidden hydro gauge. While crystallize will cause frozen gauge to shatter and be triggered on the hidden cryo or hydro gauge. And finally, believe it or not, but frozen can actually be triggered on the hidden gauge by its counterpart, which serves as a way of replenishing the frozen gauge. So that means you can freeze an already frozen enemy and thereby extending its duration. Here we will go through each reaction one by one. First up is melt. This functions in the same way as normal cryo melt, so the multiplier is 2.5. Note that melt on a normal cryo will always completely deplete the cryo gauge, which is because the current maximum a cryo gauge can be is 2 GU. However, frozen gauges can reach higher, so melt will not always end frozen. If a hidden cryo gauge is present, then its gauge is also subtracted by this melt. On the other hand though, a hidden hydro gauge will not vaporize, and it'll stay intact. In this way, it might be a bit better to consider using 2B hydro as the primary, and use the 1A cryo as the trigger so that after melting a frozen enemy you can follow it up with a vaporize. But seeing how the only two B hydro applicators in the game are Mona Bubble Pops, Tartaglia and Stance Change, his confusingly named Riptide Burst and his actual burst, it becomes hard to imagine a situation where this might be useful. Superconduct is largely the same as Melt, but since its multiplier is only 1.25, this means that it'll usually not be able to deplete the entire frozen gauge. It also reacts with the hidden cryo gauge at first of pressing 
resistant and will not affect the hidden hydro gauge. And it'll never produce electrode charge, although this particular point is still undergoing testing and not completely confirmed. Shatter is the most unique elemental reaction in that it can be triggered by heavy attacks, geo attacks, or explosion damage. When shatter is triggered, frozen gauge instantly decays completely and the hidden gauge is left intact. Swirling a frozen gauge will actually produce cryo swirl damage in addition to spreading cryo to nearby enemies. It'll also deplete the gauge of the hidden cryo gauge at present. If it doesn't deplete the frozen gauge, the enemies will actually stay frozen. And if the hidden hydro gauge is present, it'll also produce a separate swirl reaction on that independently, causing both cryo and hydro to be spread at the same time, which can in turn trigger frozen on other enemies. Crystallize will not affect frozen gauge since geo attacks that triggered it will have already shattered and completely depleted the frozen gauge. Instead, it will react with the hidden gauge if present. Using an attack of the same element as the hidden gauge will replenish the hidden gauge normally. However, using the complementary element as the hidden gauge, so cryo on hydro or hydro on cryo, will cause the frozen enemy to experience frozen again. This will reduce the hidden gauge by the normal amount and raise the frozen gauge to the level it would have been generated by the new reaction. This is the only way currently to replenish a frozen gauge so so if you keep replenishing it in this fashion you can achieve true permafreeze there is also a trick that might make it look like you can trigger vaporize on frozen this can actually be done with clear or dilute both of their attacks explosion and heavy respectively will trigger shattered and then react with a hidden hydro gauge of present and trigger vaporize if you care about fighting dendro slimes at all you might want to know that burning works in a similar way to frozen its symbol is just the pyro symbol with a glowing aura around it however since there is and any other reactions that can trigger with dendro there isn't really much to talk about here overall we learned that frozen is the eighth element and there's a hidden gauge that some reactions can interact with the strength of the frozen gauge and the time frozen lasts for it depends on the minimum gauge strength of the gauges that generated it if you haven't watched my guide on internal cooldowns already you should do so other than that i'll see you next time